Good morning and welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Santa Clarita in Home Care and Advanced Audiology. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And our guests this morning are Mary Dembowski from Oakmont Senior Living of Santa Clarita, and later in the hour we will be speaking with Nola Aronson of Advanced Audiology. Well, let's talk with Mary Good morning. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's good to see you. I don't believe you've been on the Senior Hour, have you? I have not. Margie is usually here. Margie's usually here Mm -hmm. representing, uh, well, obviously her expertise and um, talking about Oakmont, her brand new assisted living community that just opened uh, three weeks ago. Congratulations. Thank you. And what role do you play? So I am the marketing director. So my Uh role is to educate families on what we offer at Oakmont and um, show them our beautiful community and also do a lot of outreach into the community so that they know what Oakmont has to offer. And I bet you're really enjoying that, aren't you? I do. (laughs) I do. Thank you. How did the opening go? (laughs) It went great. Um, We actually had a grand opening Mm-hmm. On January 9th, and we had about mm-hmm. 350 people come through our doors that day and wow, tour the community, and they got to try some of the wonderful um, food that our director of culinary services prepared, and so it was a wonderful event. And then on January 11th, Monday, our first residents started moving in. How exciting. Yes. That, it really moved quickly. It seemed to move quickly. The, the last nine months have been kind of a whirlwind, but um, but it's all good. And we're just um, so happy to have our residents joining us and getting to know them. And it's been great. And, of course, they have to get used to the facility because many of the residents, they're seniors, mm-hmm. and they're moving from, some of them moving from home. Absolutely. Which is the... The, one of the reasons why we have to look at assisted living uh, as a option for our elder senior patients to, mm-hmm. to have to go so they can still have and maintain their quality of life. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult transition. You know, some of our residents have been in their homes for 40 to 50 years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in particular, I can think of this, this couple that's joining us that um, 60 years in their home and, you know, of course, you, they accumulate a lot of things that they don't want to part with and so we have to be very sensitive to that and um, we have a unique role at Oakmont we have uh, someone called a move-in coordinator which she'll go out to the to the home and just really sit with the families and help them to decide you know what's going to fit and what what items should you bring and you know we want them to be able to um, keep those special things and make it their home But realizing that, of course, they do have to downsize after living in a large home. But we want to make that transition as comfortable for them as possible. Mm -hmm. That is a wonderful service. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I I think a great many of these assisted living places maybe don't think about that. Mm -hmm. To, to transition the the man or the woman or the couple into an assisted living facility. Mm-hmm. And that transition starts way before they move yeah, in absolutely. with us. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I, yeah, we're not, sure. And we're not just talking about furniture. We, no, we're, we're absolutely talking about, uh, not. You know, some memories have to be chosen and brought with mm-hmm. them and some have to be left behind mm-hmm. and uh, or stored somewhere. Yeah, or given and to their children to and just trying to decide who gets what and mm-hmm. yeah. But it's also some of them are moving into Santa Clarita for the first time. Some of them just don't know the whereabouts of uh, right. our, our little community here now, and they a have little. to go out and <laughs> they have to go out and they have to explore a little bit. Mm-hmm. They have a view of what they've always heard about Magic Mountain, and it is magic up here. Mm-hmm. But you know, it takes a little bit of time to shoehorn them into that adjustment. Exactly, and that's interesting that you said, you know, exploring. We have something on our calendar um, called Explore. Explore Santa Clarita. So we have the, we have a bus. So um, we've been doing, I think three weeks in a row now, we've done a little excursion where we take our residents on the bus with our activity director and we just explore Santa Clarita so they can get to know the area that they're living.
coming in, especially if they haven't, you know, lived here. We have somebody that just moved in with us from Texas. Mm -hmm. um, we have people coming from Northern California. So, um, of course, moving to be close to their children, but not real familiar with the Santa Clarita area. Because, you know, it could take them, Mary, a, a long time to, <laughs> to uh, realize the history that we have sure. here uh, in our community. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a lot of fun. The movie industry has been here. Right. Uh, you know, we're a new kind of upstart community, but mm -hmm. uh, been around for uh, 25 years, 30 years. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's uh, the transition is going to be made easier because of uh, what we have here and the resources that we have here for those seniors. Definitely. And I've lived here since 1968. Is that wow. all? <laughs> <laughs> You've seen a lot of change. Well, the 14 wasn't even there, mm -hmm. you know. And Magic Mountain was was there, but it was new. In 1968? I don't yeah, think yeah. so. Yeah, this yeah. It Magic Mountain been around that long. Yep, no, I don't think so. It's been around that long. Wow. See, yeah, that's something I, used, I didn't know. Yeah. I, I used to go there. And, <laughs> in 1968? Yeah, around there. Around there was I the first Because I thought it was just beginning to be established that early. No, I'm and maybe, sure. you, know, you know, it's a technical thing, but I'm pretty sure that it was open, that I was coming up here in high school. And I know I would pass through here so often, Santa Clarita, and we had was a tiny nailer restaurant oh, or and yeah. then there was I've another heard about one. that there was a, a <laughs> few was other a places up tips. here that tips it was oh, another one that you know it was a freeway stop but it was just a you know as you're coming down from the north and the actually the five freeway was new at that time too so as you're coming down from the north and you know trying to get home but you see start seeing the signs here in santa clarita that you're getting back to civilization mm -hmm. and uh, now it's a big civilization exactly. that we have here well sierra highway part of it was called blood alley yeah because yeah. there were so oh, many accidents, accidents there it was mm -hmm. just two two lane you know mm -hmm. and you took sierra highway up to Palmdale and Lancaster. <laughs> it, wow. There wasn't any 14 freeway. It was amazing. I love hearing all those things. I moved here in 1996 from the East Coast. So um, even our residents, you know, they have stories to share about how what they've seen and the tiny nailers and stories like that mm -hmm. that I love hearing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've had, uh, we have the resources here as well. And, you know, we did not have the senior center in, until Barbara uh, and her husband, uh, Russ, uh, uh, went about doing the paperwork and getting it all together to get that started. Same thing with the Domestic Violence Center. And, and same thing with City Hall. That's right. Even as well. That's so, you know, wow. we're, we've seen the changes here that have taken place. And, you know, for I think most of us residents who've been around, uh, it's been a lot of fun. But to get people to transition in mm -hmm. and understand what's available here is the important part exactly. of, of moving into assisted living and mm -hmm. not, you know, feeling this is a foreign land or a foreign arena for them to, you know, have to go out on their own and fend right. for themselves as well. Right. Do you think most of the uh, the most of the um, families who move in have families here already? Mary, Absolutely, I would say probably ninety nine percent of the residents really? have children, uh, adult children, living in the Santa Clarita Valley. That's wow. Um, and you know the the reason that they're um, moving here is to be close to the to the family and to enjoy being with their family, living in a community where, you know, they know that um, their parents are uh, cared for, that there's staff there 24-7 gives that family the peace of mind, that their their loved ones are in a safe place and they can just enjoy spending time with them mm -hmm. and enjoy spending time with our community with them at our community. I mean, we have beautiful outdoor areas. We have spacious um, common areas, a living room with fireplaces. So the community is designed so that those families can come in and enjoy visiting right within the community. Mm -hmm. Well, another thing too, some of those apartments have their own little gardening area, don't they? We, ha we actually have a gardening area set aside um, in both our assisted living and our memory care community. We do offer uh, a memory care community that is called Traditions. Um, it's very close to my heart. I had a, a mom who suffered with Alzheimer's disease for um, about nine years. Oh. So um, just to see what we offer in Traditions to be able to offer the, the gardening opportunities and the spacious areas for our memory care residents to, to be outside and to be active and, and, to be active and stimulated mm -hmm. um, is just wonderful. 
And, and that's so important. Yes. It, it is. really is. It is very important. To keep them active, mm -hmm. doing things, so that they're not sitting and drooping. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And when they're engaged, it, it helps with, you know, with their overall mood. I mean, sometimes when... You know, they say get agitated or um, you know act out. It's it's because they're just they're bored and mm -hmm. they they need some stimulation mm -hmm. and they need mm -hmm. that TLC. And um, once you provide that for them and give them the the opportunities to be outside, and we even have a bird aviary and it's just lovely to sit and watch the birds. Um, you just find that overall their well being is enhanced. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I love to watch the birds. I have two bird feeders in my backyard mm -hmm. and. And it's always alive. Always. Yes. You can see those birds fighting with each other. Get off. This is my uh -huh. space. You know? yeah. <laughs> and it's wonderful. It is. It's, it's entertaining. And even the mm -hmm. pigeons mm -hmm. and the doves. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It really is. So are most of the people also moving in? They're, they're, they're couples as well? There are a lot of... You know, um, people coming in who have lost their spouse. Or I think it's it's definitely a mixture. Um, you know, we have couples that are moving in that maybe one um, <clears throat> needs a little bit of assistance, and so you know the other may still be fairly independent, but um, you know they're choosing to move in so that the burden doesn't fall on that spouse. Um, we have I think eight. Uh, large two bedrooms that are, are occupied by couples um, to date. And then, uh, yes, you know, some single people that have lost their spouse that don't want to live alone anymore, you know, want to have, have friends and be able to socialize and not, you know, be isolated at home. So um, it's definitely a mixture. Yeah, so, so those uh, people moving in know they're moving in. They have to, they'll adapt, mm -hmm. get used to it. But a decision was made at some point that, you know, that move was going to take place. But there are listeners out there right now who who are not sure. They're not sure about the signs and the symptoms mm -hmm. that, that one uh, might have. Uh, with their spouse or with themselves mm -hmm. that say, you know, you're not long for being able to live alone and right. independent, and we have to figure out beforehand mm -hmm. what we need to do. Sure, and it's always good to have a plan. You know, even if you're, you know, f feeling that this isn't something that you need right now, it's just looking for the future. You know, wh what are we going to do when we can't live in the home, uh, you know, any longer? If it's a two story home, sometimes stairs become an yep. issue, or, you know, if it's getting more difficult to prepare meals because you know eating properly is is so important so um, you know I always encourage people just come in and and take a look at what mm -hmm. um, an assisted living is what Oakmont has to offer so that you're prepared for when the time comes um, if that time should come that you know what your options are and and what fits you um, mm -hmm. you know it's always good to visit different the different communities that are available in the Santa Clarita area to see what feels right and what works within your budget and there's lots of things to consider so doing that pre-planning i think is definitely being important. prepared there's no doubt about mm -hmm. it some of our some of the caregivers so-called caregivers the the sandwich generation who have their own kids but they're also taking care of their senior patients recognize though that uh, their parents are just not doing as well. They're not taking mm -hmm. care of their pet. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not cleaning their house. Um, they're not taking care of finances or even taking their medication. Exactly. You know, these are all the things that all of a sudden crop up in your sure. face. And certainly preparation and understanding that maybe an adaptation to a new way of doing things at home will allow them to stay longer. Mm -hmm. But there is going to be a break point, literally. And it, you <laughs> hope that it's not a fractured hip of course. or anything like that. Yes. But there's going to be a point where people are going to say, you can't live at home by yourself anymore. Exactly. And uh, yeah. that's a hard reality to accept. It is. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a conversation that, you know, we all need to have with our parents. And, and sometimes it's, it's, it's not an easy conversation, um, but it's just, um, yeah, if you start to see those signs, then um, communication is so important and just share your concerns with your loved one. And I think it's all in the way you approach it. Um, you know, I think we all feel like we want to stay in our home. That's our home home, mm -hmm. but it's not always the safest and best situations. I, I feel like home is home is where you're at, and sometimes a new home is, is 
the best thing. And you don't always know there's no rating at all that we know of in terms of ourselves or our watching our loved ones to say, yep, they hit that point. Right. Because sometimes, you know, you want to do it earlier. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes what we're seeing is that it's almost too late for them. And certainly the, the difficult part is being too late means that you could end up in a nursing in a home. nursing home. And, you know, the, of all the things I, I hear from my patients is, I'm not going to a nursing right. home. Right. And we have to strive uh, and move away from that ideal that that's where we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. Because the fear of our seniors is, I'm not going there. I don't want to be there. And they're going to fight tooth and nail to stay out of them. Right. So we have to provide them with options. And Oakmont does exactly. that. Exactly. And, you know, keeping them active and healthy and and thriving is is going to keep them out of that nursing home and i feel like that's what we offer at oakmont is you know having those nutritious meals having the the environment where they can be socially stimulated and yet you know they're still maintaining their independence but in an environment where it's going to again keep them thriving and hopefully keep them out of a nursing home well now do you have uh, <coughs> does oakmont have access or do uh, clients moving in there if they have pets, dogs? Oh, cats. yes. We're very pet friendly. Okay, because that is extremely <laughs> important of to course. some people. You're oh going to bring God. your birds? Pets, are there a lot? I don't have birds. <laughs> I know, but you have them in the back. You're going <laughs> to well, that's true. No, try to transition be, them over no, with you be if an you go Oak there? Mont. No, they're already there. <laughs> but I will bring up two cats. <laughs> cats and dogs are, are welcome. We, we have some cute little dogs in our community already but we we offer a pet park so mm -hmm. there is an area where our residents can take their dogs and have them off leash there's a nice bench they can sit on and um, we also uh, our staff can assist with pet care so maybe mm -hmm. if a resident is you know unable to to take the dog out um, we can help with that so we want them those Pets are precious and part of their lives, and mm -hmm. we want them to be able to keep their pets. Yeah. Have you Very had important. any, any other than dogs, cats, and birds, have you had anybody say, I'd like to bring my raccoon in? <laughs> well, Not, I had a pet raccoon. Oh, my uh, goodness. That's why I'm saying that. Uh, I was They're surprised incredible. You had, They're incredible you had, pets. How, how long did you have a pet raccoon? Probably about seven years. Seven years. I had <laughs> really no bad. idea. How would you could, like to have that? Oh, yeah. I'm bringing in my raccoon. Uh, oh, they are. They're magnificent pets, and they're so wow. smart. Well, I'll have to oh. let you know if we have one of those, Barbara. I'll have to call you and say, how do we what? manage this one? <laughs> well, yeah, she used to sleep right down in the middle of the bed. We had her moved on to a, she was awake during the day and she'd sleep at night. Is that wonderful? Well, that, I would love to talk to you more about that. That's very interesting. <laughs> uh, and, well, when she said that on the show a few months ago, I thought that's more than just interesting. That's the first but time I've ever heard of that. And uh, you, Barb, you had to move when you moved from the valley up to Santa Clarita. Then that was when you couldn't take your your raccoon with you. Right. And it was called your raccoon's name was Bandit. Bandit. Oh, How could I perfect that? name? <laughs> <laughs> and we had to take her to uh, we. There was a. Um, Animal Sanctuary in Thousand Oaks. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's still there or not, mm -hmm. but um, we took her there, and she was in a great big enclosure with lots of other raccoons, mm -hmm. and whenever we would go up to visit her, she'd come immediately there and wow. chat her and talk like crazy. Yeah. She recognized us, oh, you know? That's amazing. And it was heartbreaking to put her there, but sure. she was well taken care of. Yeah. Wow. And just like Oak Mont, Mont will take care of our seniors in the same way, making mm -hmm. sure that uh, mm -hmm. they're in the right place, providing not only meals and medication, transportation. There are just so many things they offer that allow a person to continue their quality of exactly. life. Exactly. Social, a lot of social activities, exercise programs, music, art. Um, yeah, just daily <clears throat> offering those activities, um, tailoring them to what the residents want and so that's a lot of what we're doing right now is finding out what kind of activities they enjoy so that we can incorporate them into our our daily programs well i think art is a very important mm -hmm. part it really is mm -hmm. because it it's it's stimulating yes. you know you're creating something yep. whether it's just a ball with all kinds of different splashes of mm -hmm. color you're creating something mm -hmm. 
It, it's and very rewarding. Is, oh, yeah, yeah, it really is. So if they want to, Mary, if uh, our listeners want to get a tour, come over and see you, how, what's the phone number over there? And um, how do they find you? We can be reached at uh, 661-295-2025. Um, you can call and ask for myself or Margie, mm-hmm. uh, Melissa. We'd be happy to show you around. And then we um, we also have a web website, oakmontofsantacarita.com. Mm-hmm. So you can get a lot of information there as well. Wow. Excellent. Uh, congratulations well, on your opening. You. It's, uh, it's great to have you here to spread the word that our seniors have uh, other options. We're going to take a break. We're talking My with pleasure. Mary Dombrowski uh, from Oakmont. She's marketing director over there. Her phone number is 295-2025. Thanks for being on the show. Thank again, you very Mary. much. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you.